that. Excellent shirt, really. I can see what you see in him. Excellent shirt, really. I can see what you see in him. Don't be an ass, Colin. And that's, that was one of those lines that just, it twists inside of me so much as I'm saying it, but I know like if I can do it straight faced, then people are gonna believe that I am that, that mean. Colin is misunderstood, it's what I always say, because you know, when you play somebody that is um, not very nice up front, you, you've you gotta understand why he's that way and justify it. So I had some justifications behind his attitude and, and whatnot, but um, Dan Palladino told me that um, Colin's family was probably the richest family of the bunch, and by like, tens of millions of dollars richer than I think Logan's family. And Logan's family was very well off. And I'm not very much like Colin, which makes it so fun to play. I love playing terrible people. Um, Colin has some good sides to him. Let's not, let's not throw him completely under the bus. Um, he's a little funny and, um, and he's got his moments, um, but it's just so much more fun to play that. Okay, that's it. Back to the pool house, man. We have some serious bucking up to do here. I swipe some scotch. I'll reenact the Passion of the Cross. <laughs> and Amy had a good time writing for, um, for those guys. She she was very much into. Oh, this is a different dynamic of people with attitude that is coming from left field, and so she just kept writing it. And I think that's why we stayed on longer. And so when we showed up, it was definitely like. Um, I guess a jolt into the show. We didn't know. We were just excited to be there because we were on the show. You can back out, you know, no one's forcing you. I know. Vos ipsi parate. You trust me? In omnia paratus. You jump, I jump, Jack. In omnia paratus. This was in uh, the You Jump, I Jump, Jack episode. It's a fan favorite. And that night was like a memory I'll never forget. It just felt like a great camping vacation with friends and we were playing guitar and we were up until the sun came up and um, there were so many people and extras and everyone there and the energy was very very fun oh, thank God. <laughs> that whole shoot was massive and they had that scaffolding for them to jump off of. Um, they had me announcing the things in the beginning. Um, I think I'm the second person to say in omnia paratus, um, where Gorilla Girl is the first person to say it. Please raise your glasses. In omnia paratus. In omnia paratus. So it's, I mean, they're my brothers. They are my brothers till the end. This show doesn't go away. Obviously, we're still talking about it 20 years later, and uh, I, I have them in a group text of like, "Hey, we're, this is coming up again. Yep, I got a call too." And it's just, uh, it's just nice. It's my family. It's the original Life and Death Brigade. It's our last, last day shooting. We didn't have enough scenes with Ed, so uh, the one scene that we did have, it was just like this. I'm, I'm acting with Ed Herman right now. This is very cool. Like this is one of those moments in where I've arrived. Who the hell are you? Well, if I knew that, I could dismiss my therapist, couldn't I? Though oh, she's very hot. I'm Colin McRae. How wonderful for you. What are you doing in my house? When he passed, uh, we had all had a little bit of a reunion at um, at a uh, at his service for just the cast and some family and friends, and um, it was beautiful and. And then learning even more about Ed during that service was, um, it, you know, made me realize, like, you, you really got lucky here. Went to a fan festival one year. It was one of the best, best days of my life. But there was a line of people wanting an autograph and to have a conversation for over an hour. It never, it never changed the size. They had to pull me away. And it was like, this is the only thing I came here for. All I wanted to do is just talk to these people who came all the way out here to see me. And it was great. So great. I love you all. You guys are so, so loyal. So loyal. And we all love you for it. Don't go anywhere. I think that show is 
it doesn't die because it's safe and comfortable, but it has enough conflict to keep it interesting, to keep it uh, relatable with like a family conflict. Fighting with your mom is kind of a big deal. It sounds, you know, it sounds like easy to put down, but once you really go through like a, a long, a long um, relationship that had, you know, it's, it's twists and turns and uh, it, it's, that's, that's the drama behind it that I think hooks people in. Um, in terms of the drama side, and then it's also like, it's like the best to put on in the background and let it play a gazillion times. If Colin were to have a spin-off, it would be, you know, where he finally is, has to take over like the philanthropic part of the, the company of his parents, and, um, and then he has to like actually figure out how to empathize for the first time, and I think that would be the Colin show. It's like, oh, Colin actually is learning how to have a heart and maybe it's like working or not. We'll see. I, I, I love to think that Colin is redeemable at some point or another.